Discussion Program on Facebook. And we are coming to you from the JIS Radio Studio at 58A Halfway Tree Road. In 58A, right? Good. Now, I'm your host, Vanessa Silvera, and my guest today is the Poet Laureate of Jamaica, Olive Senior. Listen, I was about to say Lorna Goodison, um, but you've you've since taken the torch from Lorna Goodison and you are the new Poet Laureate of Jamaica. I'm talking with Olive Senior. Now, before we get into our interview, wherever you are in the world, thanks for joining us. And uh, remember, share, like, send those comments, send those questions, and we will be sure to ask Miss Senior at some point in the interview. Welcome, Miss Senior. Thank you, Vanessa. How you do? I'm good. I'm good. I'm so happy to have you in <laughs> studio, especially in this time of COVID-19. You don't get much face-to-face -face interaction mm -hmm. with persons. So I'm very happy that you've agreed to come in today. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Now, when our fans heard that you were coming to studio, the response was overwhelming and we were flooded with lots of questions um, before the start of the interview. Now, let's see how many of those you'll be able to get in. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to start with your formative years and how you start, how you got your start in the literary arts? Mm -hmm. Well, I grew up in rural Jamaica, in, in the bush in a way. Um, I was actually born on the border of Manchester and Trelawney at a place called Shudley. But I always say I'm from Troy because Troy is the metropolis, Troy Trelawney. You know, everything was there, the mm -hmm. school, the church, the whatever. Um, and, and it was a community of small farmers, my, including my father. And, um, but you know, we had a lot of freedom as children to just be run around and know, we knew everybody. It, there was a very strong sense of community. And I think I was a very fast and inquisitive little girl. So I, I just had a curiosity about life, about everything around me, about nature. I want, and I wanted to know everything. I wanted to know what's that tree, really, what's the name, you know, from a very early age. How do you do this? How do you make this? And so I grew up in a, in a that very rural environment right. where nature, of course, was all around us, was part of life, everyday life. Is that why so many of your poems are about <laughs> nature? Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess, um, yeah. So that those were my formative years. And mm -hmm. then I, I spent, I, I moved to Westmoreland. Um, when I was four, and then I moved back to Troy when I was eight to attend. No, I moved back at whatever age I started mm -hmm. school. I forgot, six or seven. Mm -hmm. um, so I spent a couple of years there, and then I went back to Westmoreland. And then, and so I went to Mount Ward School, which is in Hanover, mm -hmm. for a couple of years. And then I went to Montego Bay High School. At what point did you know that you wanted to study the literary arts and you wanted to be a poet? Well, I didn't, I mean, it wasn't as precise as that, but from a very early, from when I was a child, I, I tell everybody at the age of four, because that's when I learned to read, I fell in love with words. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm not saying that I decided then I was going to be a writer, but I think I always knew I was going to be a creative artist because I was also, I also wanted to be an artist. You know, I was always drawing. Fine arts? Yeah, drawing reading, those are the things that I did as a child. Um, so, but even as a small child, I was writing, you know, I was always making up stories, making up poems, writing stuff. And um, so it was kind of inevitable. There was nothing else that I planned to do in life but that. And so, and that has taken you to academia. It's taken you all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, and now you are Poet Laureate of Jamaica. Did you know, did you even imagine that you would receive this kind of honor from your country? No, not at all. Because, you know, I never think about these things, to be honest. My entire focus in life is on my work, is on my writing, is what I'm doing in the moment. And I've been fortunate because various honors and awards and so on have come you, to me. You are quite decorated. But I don't seek them out, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't, you can't live your life thinking or hoping you're going to get something. Mm -hmm to reward you. The reward should be in, should be from your readers, you know, and, and, and um, finding people who value and like your work. So that, that is what matters to me. But of course, I'm, I'm really very honored to be the Poet Laureate um, of Jamaica. And I, I just, I'm looking forward to, to doing something with the role, to 
convince people that poetry is important, mm -hmm. you know, and that it's something that we should have in our lives, whether as readers or writers of poetry, or reciters of poetry, you know. I went to school in a time when we learned by, poems by heart. Mm. And I'm, I'm hopeless, I have a terrible memory, I can't even remember my own poems. But a, a lot of my friends, even, even people of my parents' generation, could recite long bits of poetry, you know. Mm. And I wish people could still do that, because sometimes when you need some little bit of consolation, yeah. it's, it's always good to be able to evoke something, to, to just bring something from memory, you know. No, you spoke about your your eagerness to start um, your programs and your projects mm -hmm. as Poet Laureate. Yeah. Talk about some of the things that you are going to be doing. Right. Well, um, as you mentioned, I have a great interest in nature. I always have in the environment. And so like who, who looks at a bunch of guineps and decides, oh, I'll write a <laughs> poem about this. Of course, but this is what we do. <laughs> Yeah. Or, or hen or roost or what have you. This, I guess this is what I want to say to people. People have a very elevated idea of what poetry is. You know, yes. it has to be Shakespeare and it has to be grand and you, you learn it in school. I want to disabuse people of that idea and say poetry is about us. It's about our environment. It's about who we are. And you can write poetry about the simplest thing. I mean, I have poems about snails and God knows what else. So... Um, what the main thing that I would like to do as poet laureate is introduce this whole idea, introduce poetry as a means of our taking responsibility for our environment mm -hmm. and the things that need fixing, talking about it, looking at it, and encouraging children to realize that you know what, it's your responsibility. It is our country, and we need to, need to take responsibility for what's happening. And part of that is just learning about Jamaica all over again. I mean, I'm shocked at people who don't know what a guinep tree looks like or a guava tree. Jamaicans. You know, Jamaicans. All right. You go to the market, you buy fruit. You don't know the source of it. Mm -hmm. And so the slogan for the project that I want to introduce is, I see my land. Because the first thing you have to do is look and see and take in with your eyes and then go from there. Mm -hmm. So I would love to um, be able to work with the people who are on the ground, the environmentalists, the scientists, the people who are out there struggling yeah. to convince us that we need to take responsibility and to find ways in which poetry can be used to sensitize people to what we need to do as a country. Um, so that's one. That's the main thing, actually. And it's a th three-year program, so I'm working on the details of that. But right. that is the centerpiece of the program, and I want everybody to be thinking, I see my land. I see my land. Yes. <laughs> Hashtag, I see my land. I see my land, yeah. No. Which no. is based on quite a well-known poem, or one that used to be well-known from. It's called Jamaica 1938, mm. and it starts... I saw my land in the morning, and oh, but she was fair. And I'm trying to say Jamaica is no longer fair because we're mashing it up and dumping garbage everywhere. And so I'd like to, to just use that as a way of saying, hey, we need to, um, all of us need to get involved in the whole idea of um, Protecting environmentalism, and preserving, preserving yeah. and so on, but also learning about the country. How do you, what kind of a challenge do you see now that, you know, we're in the throes of a pandemic? What mm -hmm. kind of a challenge do you expect from, um, you know, the social distancing, the having to do all of this virtually almost? Well, two things. The pandemic is going to be, it's going to end. I mean, I... Yes. You know what I yes. mean? Well, um, let's just pause for effect. I think The pandemic so. is going to end. <laughs> Don't Take you your think vaccine. so? <laughs> I do. I hope. I pray. I yeah. know the pandemic is going to end. I mean, so we need to sort of move beyond that. To, to me, um, the, the worst, what's worse than the pandemic is global warming. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the next thing where we're going to face collectively in the, in the entire world. And so I think we need to be prepared for that, to think about that beyond, beyond um, COVID. COVID-19, because 19. It, we've kind of put a pause on everything and we've tried yes. to fight COVID. 
In any event, um, you know, I keep saying to write a poem, to compose a poem, it's the easiest thing in the world. You need a piece of paper and a little pencil. If you don't have that, you have your mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what uh, spoken word is about. And therefore, I say it's the most democratic of the arts because you don't need a theater, you don't need a publisher. You, d you, can, you can get your poem out there. And, of course, nowadays with social media, yeah. which is how I've been putting out my pandemic poems. And I want, I want <laughs> young listeners, young viewers, to latch on to what Miss, what Miss Senior said about being able to write about anything you don't mm. need you don't need a university degree and um mm. to, to write mm -hmm. and it's it's so important because a lot of us feel like poetry is you know um <laughs> it's it's not for us because yes. our parents want us to yeah talk a little bit about that um the the challenge that jamaicans still have putting the traditional careers mm -hmm. um before the literary arts and careers in the literary arts. Yeah. Well, I mean, writing, you know, there is a career in the literary arts, but I'm not even talking about that. I think poetry is something that belongs to every human being on earth. Your heartbeat, I mean, your the the children, you're, you're born hearing the heartbeat of your mother. Your first words are in poetry or I, mama, papa. I mean, it is so profoundly part of who we are as humans. And I think that the first art, artistic endeavor was after the big hunt, the tribe gathering around in a circle and maybe dancing, and the hunter reciting something about thing and the people responding. I mean, this is where poetry comes from. Mm -hmm. Poetry is the oldest of the arts. Poetry and, of course, music. Mm -hmm. Poetry and music go together, you know, the two things. And so I really feel it is something of what makes us fundamentally human, something we share. Yeah. And so when I say poetry belongs to everyone, not everyone can be a writer, not everyone is going to publish a book. But all of us can express ourselves in some way, in poetry, in rhyme, in song. And some of us will go on to be published or st to study poetry at university or whatever. But the point is, all of us have the potential to be poets in that sense of mm -hmm. expressing ourselves. And also, I think poetry, we need poetry. Poetry is something that provides us, it can heal a broken heart, it can. as I say, better than a Band-Aid. Um, why is it that at important moments in our life we drag out a piece of poetry, whether it's a funeral or a christening or, you know what I mean? Yes. Um, people in love, even if it's just roses are red, violets are <laughs> blue. And, and I also include song in that because um, Jamaica's... All our religious religions here have produced wonderful, beautiful poetry in song. Mm -hmm. You know, Noah built the ark and gone, another generation come. I mean, that is just fantastic poetry. Yeah. So I'm just saying not everyone can be a poet and a published poet. I'm not saying that. We all have different skills, but I would love everyone to think, you know what? Poetry matters to me. I want, I'm going to bring poetry into my life. Read a poem a day. Yeah. Listen to poetry. Teach and, and read to your children. Encourage your children. Um, I, I want to point out, just to underscore what you're saying. You know, I was I was talking to a teacher, uh, an English teacher, the other day, and she she was marking papers, and she she started to talk about how the difference between the students who read. Mm -hmm. And the students who don't absolutely and it's it's not something you practice you just read yes and it has an immense effect on mm -hmm. your writing on your learning on yes. your education and on how um wide your views are mm -hmm. and so yeah that's and important. kids love love poetry what i mean is we love poetry until we have to study it mm -hmm. you know but when you think of school yard, of <laughs> rhymes you know kids love rhymes and rhythms and so on and there's a lot of poetry out there for kids that we can read to them, we can encourage them to read. And mm -hmm. can I just say, in addition to my focus on eco-poetics, you know, poetry about nature, eco that I'm going to encourage, um, the, we're going to establish through the, at the National Library um, the uh, Poetry Archive, where 
we will ask Jamaican poets to read their work and so on. But also one of the things that will be at the National Archive is our poems that are that relate to the environment. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is teaching or if a parent would like a poem to read to the child to know, okay, a poem about a tree or that's where you're gonna find it. Mm -hmm. You know? So so those two things will work. People will have access to poems about nature. All right. So and it's 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 are these your poems or are these no poems all from... poems by Jamaican poets? Okay. Um, we we're going to put that together. Um, the National Library already has a, a poetry index, so this is building on that, mm -hmm. where we'll have recordings, but also um, people will be able to access what's there to get a poem that they want. You know, so if it it will be helpful for teachers parents, students, just people who want to know, oh, can I find a poem about guava? Right, and they'd, uh, they'd, long, uh, they'd log on. <laughs> or parrotfish, <laughs> or whatever. Parrot <laughs> so, they'd be, so they'd be logging on to the NLJ's website? Would yes. Would they be able to find it on which, the website? Which, yes. Um, I'm, I'm not sure at, at what stage it's at now. Mm -hmm. The NLJ does have a poetry index, but this is something that we're going to build All right. on for the... Um, Poems about nature, eco e poems. Eco poetry, or sorry, e eco poetics. Yeah, or, e yeah, or e eco poetry, yeah. All right, let's take some of the comments from Facebook. We mm -hmm. have Laurel Thompson. She says, Good afternoon. Awesome information indeed. Be blessed always, beautiful Miss Senior. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We also have, Hi, Jade. Good afternoon. We also have um, author Andreen Bonner. The reading and the writing happens at the same time. All right, you reading and writing happens at the same time. Drop us another comment um, and elaborate on that a little bit. We also have questions um, from fans and or viewers who kind of wanted to know what prompted you to start writing poetry and short stories, but we went through that already. Mm -hmm. um, we also have somebody asking what conditions were present in your society that impacted you as a black person and a woman um, that you seem to manifest in your writing? <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a big. Um, it is. I mean, isn't it? If you've read any of my work, you mm. you know you'd see it. It comes out in everything I write. Right. But what I'm really writing about, whether it's in my poetry or fiction, is. I'm trying to really capture the essence of who we are, of Jamaican society, of history, where we're coming from, mm -hmm. et cetera. And, and of course, that, that is dealing with issues of race, it's dealing with gender, it's dealing with all, all real life issues. You know, this is, this is what I'm concerned about and I've always been concerned about. I think this is a good time to pause and have you read one of your, your poems. What have you selected for us? Well, I selected a poem to prove to you that you can write a poem about anything. This is a very Jamaican poem in my book, um, Over the Roofs of the World, which deals mainly with birds. And I have poems in there like um, Hen, Sensefall. I don't know if people nowadays remember what a Sensefall is. is. And, but I'm going to read one called Guinea Hen, which um, Guinea Hen used to be very common but people don't seem to know what they are now, but it's, it's a bird that's polka dot. Do you know good guinea hen? You, have you ever seen one? No, absolutely not. It's a bird that originally came from Africa and mm -hmm. ran wild all over Jamaica, but I think they're all gone. But they're spotted. That's the important thing about the poem, okay? So I'll read it. And um, it includes a Jamaican saying, which is seven year not enough to wash speckle off guinea hen back. All right? The speckle is the... Mm -hmm. So, in Granny's eyes, our foremost barnyard warrior is not, after all, our fierce rooster or surly turkey gobbler, but mild guinea hen, her badge of office, her spotted feathers. She stands on guard at that barrier they call reputation. For Granny, explicating the difference between good girls and bad, always ends her homily with warning as fact. Seven year not enough to wash speckle off guinea hen back. 
When Granny holds up guinea hen as a symbol of spoiled reputation, we study her pattern and interpret Granny's warning to mean not that you can't do so, just don't let the world know. <laughs> Never let the spots show. And that, did you, did you see a guinea hen and you just decided to start writing? No, I didn't just see a guinea hen. What I mean is, I have seen guinea hens in the past mm -hmm. and it wasn't so much a guinea hen, I guess I was thinking of the, the, the saying, speckle not, um, yeah, seven years, not seven years not enough. Mm -hmm. And so in these poems, they're called, um, that whole section in the book is called um, Barnyard. I can't even remember. You wouldn't believe it's my book. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's about um, things like hen, rooster, guinea hen, and so on. Because although this is a book about birds and it has birds like peacocks that mm -hmm. we think of as grand birds, I wanted to show that, you know, what? Yeah, it's called yard fowl, yard the fowl. section in the book. I wanted to say yard fowl are just as important as the big showy birds, Yeah, you know? And a lot of my work is about that. It's about saying simple things matter, simple things are important. Simple things matter. Yep. Simple things are important. Let's talk about your, you have a second book there mm -hmm. um, and it is Pandemic Poems, the first wave. Mm -hmm. um, you are coming out with a new wave, a second wave mm -hmm. um, soon. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, well, the second wave, well, let me just say these poems, I started writing them in March last year when and there was uh, the lockdown. Lockdown began, right. and I uh, thought, like everybody else, I thought I was going crazy. And but I became interested in the language of the pandemic, mm -hmm. you know, like um, social distancing, um, you know, contact tracing. Well, that was later, but uh, masks, the wearing of masks, hand sanitizing, yeah. etc. Hand, even the word hand, was very important. So I I started writing down words and then I started writing poems that are related to the words and then I started posting them on social media on Twitter and Facebook and I just continued writing because um, it was like having a loop connecting me to readers who mm -hmm. were giving me feedback about how much they enjoy the poems but that also kept me um, going you know yeah. so the the poems in this book um, I, I stopped writing this set towards the end of last year. So it's called First Wave, but I'm still writing poems that I'm posting on social media and I'm calling them Second Wave. Okay. So that will, hopefully, that might be a book. How did you know when you were finished with the First Wave? Um, how did I know? Gosh, why are you asking me questions? Like, <laughs> how do I remember? <laughs> um, do you ever really know when to stop an anthology or do you just say, okay, fine, I'm done putting this down and starting another one? But no, I, th I seem, I don't remember, but I seem to, I continued writing actually, but I think, um, I think it was because people, it, it was at a certain stage of what was happening in the world in relation to, to the pandemic, um, you know, and they were talking about first wave, second wave. And the last poem in it was, it's called Liberty, where people were saying, we want to party and we're tired of this. Mm. Um, and I thought by then I was thinking of a book. So it ended at that thing, that um, poem, but I continued to write poems. I continued um, about the pandemic and I still am writing. You, yes. I have no idea when it's going to end. When the, you know, the poems will end when somebody says it's over. Mm, I'm not sure anybody <laughs> will say it is over, but well, we, you mentioned that mm -hmm. you write on Facebook and Twitter. Mm -hmm. Please tell us your handles. Um, hold just, it. it's, it's just, it's just Olive Senior. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, hashtag pandemic poems number whatever it is i number them how many have you gone so far do you do you remember no well this is uh, no i don't know how many it's a book it's page 91 but it has illustrations in it and okay. the, i'm now i think i'm now at about number 20 something in terms of the new ones because okay. i don't post them every day I, and i don't write them every day 
but I try to post at least once a week, sometimes mm -hmm. more than once. All week. right. And when when does when does the second wave come out? Oh, I don't know. That's the second wave will come out when when I stop writing second wave. This is what I'm saying. I have no yeah. idea you know what's going to happen towards the end of the year. Yes. So and I'll just I hope we don't have a third wave. <laughs> and with COVID-19 being so unpredictable, exactly. but we have we have the vaccine, so yes, yes. hopefully um, we will be able to go back to some semblance of normalcy. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's what we're hoping. All right. So, do you? I was telling you earlier. I was I was fangirling a little bit, and I was telling her that my favorite poem of hers, apparently I'm not alone, is Colonial Girls School because of my background, because of the school Saint Andrew High School for Girls. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, that I went to, and we we got to talking about what the what the education system is now um, mm -hmm. and the last stanza says um, for isn't it strange how northern eyes in the brighter world before us now pale mm -hmm. um, what did you have in mind okay uh, the context of that poem is about my own childhood I was a colonial girl you were not clearly you were beyond <laughs> that <you're after. laughs> no. and um, I keep on saying you know I feel that I got an excellent high school education, very well grounded, but the poem is about what we did not get. Yeah. There was nothing about us. There was nothing in the curriculum about us as Jamaicans. So and that's what my poem is lamenting. So it's not about um, a European-based or Eurocentric education being better. It's just that it wasn't no. grounded. It, it was grounded because grounded. it was very rigid. No. I mean, good heavens, we had, we had exams nonstop to you know and so on we're constantly being tested but also in in the school I went to and I suspect you know I went to a girls school Montego Bay High and I suspect it was a case for all the schools at that time as as women as girls we were really pushed to succeed there mm -hmm. was no question of not right you know not doing well in your exams most people virtually everyone in my sixth form went to university have multiple degrees I'm probably the least qualified <laughs> so I'm just saying no we were encouraged as you know to to succeed mm -hmm. what we but part of that success was not was or what was lacking in all of that was self-knowledge about who we were as Jamaicans. Mm -hmm. You know, there was nothing in our education. It was all British. It was a British cur curriculum. And also, when I went to school, a lot of our teachers came from England. Like, my, both my headmistresses were English. And the Northern Eyes is referring to that. There was a kind of way when English people looked at you, you know, you. Um, <laughs> so in a way, I'm sort of at the end of the poem, I'm saying, and it's addressed to my be the person who was my best friend in school and saying, you know, the brighter world before in this brighter world that you and I and people like us are now facing mm -hmm. those northern eyes pale. Yeah. In other words, we are no longer feeling under that gaze because we are finding out who we are. We are as 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 young women as people. Do you remember how old you were when you when you wrote it? I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm asking you if you remember. Um, were you were you still a student? No, no, I wrote it. No, I don't know how old I was, but I had mm. left school by then when I wrote it. But it's one of my early poems, yeah. and I mean, the, the, it's just amazing because all over the world people are reading this poem, and I'm saying to them, it's about me, and it's about a colonial thing and even I mean the other day I got a an email from a girl a 15 year old in Germany who says we're doing this poem and we want to ask you some questions and I'm saying I'm surprised you're doing this poem you're not in and they said yeah but you know there's so much in it we can tease out right we can talk about it's so relatable yeah and so it's this this is one of those poems that will exist for eons to come because of how relatable it is. Yes, people yeah. are, it's like my poem Meditation on Yellow that everybody loves, you know, they're just certain, I mean, this is great. I think every poet usually has one or two poems that people really take to heart. And right. You meditate on red, you meditate on yellow, and <laughs> it, it just it just flows out. Mm. 
It just it doesn't right flow down. out. It's very hard work, Miss. I will please, have you know. Please tell me how hard. Okay, so how? What? What is? Talk about the process of writing. Like how is it? Sometimes, sometimes is it easy? Sometimes no, is it hard? It's, sometimes it's hard you, work. What's the process? What's your process? And I, I teach writing. I tell my students. It's a quotation. I don't know from whom, but it says, "The art of writing is applying the seat of the pants to the seat of the chair." Because people think you're out there swanning around, you know, as a writer, and you just toss off a word here and there. It's very hard work. Mm -hmm. And it requires commitment. It does. It requires giving up a lot of life out there, a lot of social life, because it requires focus, even, even a poem. I mean, I will write a poem. I'll, I'll write and revise a poem endlessly. So sometimes it would take me years to, to have a finished poem. Which is, One I'm point. shocked at how quickly I've written these, but this is different. So meditation on... Yellow. M and I also do a lot of research for my poems. So meditation on yellow didn't just pop out of my head. Mm -hmm. It was based on a lot of... Re I've done a lot of research about the indigenous, indigenous Caribbean, the Taino, that encounter with Columbus and so on. And of course, that infuses... A, a lot of the poem is about that encounter. Mm -hmm. But also I reflected on where have we gone in 500 years, you know? So the second part is about where we haven't gone. Um, it's, and the other element in the poem is a color poem. Mm -hmm. So I research colors. So in other words, a lot of that book, that poem has to do with um, my, um, uh, there's a lot of work that went yeah. into the research element but I had to do that before I wrote the poem. And one good thing about a color poem is that it's a way of pulling, pulling together all the elements in the poem. But I just want to say, though, that um, if, if you, it's hard work, not just for me, but you know, if you're serious about writing and being a writer, it's, it's a profession like any other. You learn your craft and you stick to it, you know? Yeah. All right. So it's. We have a question from mm. Facebook. Um, I think I think I lost it. And Margaret Lim, um, mm -hmm. fellow poet, is saying saying hello. Um, we oh, have and Margaret, yeah, mm -hmm. who is a, a a very fine Jamaican poet. Yeah. They, when you hear from one poet to another, she just called you fine. All <laughs> right. Um, no greater commendation than that of your peers. I can't find my producer is telling me I can't find it. All right, but let's take some other comments. Oh, oh, I, all right. I think we we addressed that. She was uh, there's somebody asking when the when the next book is coming out. Um, <laughs> the the culture. Oh, sorry, this one is out now. Pandemic when is poems. Yeah, when is second wave coming out? Oh, please. And, <laughs> <laughs> right, right away. So first wave is just out. <laughs> all right. Uh -huh. When is the novel coming out? Miss Cena did tell you that she go write novel this year. <laughs> <laughs> so we have persons online asking when the novel is coming Which out. Which novel? <laughs> <laughs> so are there any plans? I, to... I have been writing a novel, but I'm kind of stuck. I don't want to talk about it because Look. that will set goat mouth on it. Mm, all right. So we're, no, because we, we want that. So we're, we're, we want it. So, so no we're not novel, going to be talking no about coming it. Out. <laughs> Lambert Hamilton says, writing is very hard work. It can take a long time to complete a single piece. As you said, mm -hmm. years. It can take mm -hmm. years to finish a, a, a single piece. Everyone sees and celebrates the, the finished product, mm -hmm. uh, but the process goes unnoticed. Yeah, I like yeah. that. That's true. It is pro it's process that is unnoticed. That's behind every, every work of art, really. And Margaret Lim says meditation on yellow is one of her favorite poems. <laughs> All right. Um, so keep those comments coming. Keep those questions coming as well. Uh, Miss Senior is going to be reading from f the first wave of pandemic oh, poems now. Okay. Um, and we. What? Listen. You want to get me in trouble? What? He's asking who you're reading now. Who am I reading now? You, this, you can choose not to answer that because, you know, you could also say yourself. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even sure what <laughs> I'm reading now. Um, 
I'm not sure I'm reading anyone now mm. at the moment, to be honest. All right. So let's hear let's hear your piece from the first wave of pandemic poems. Which one will you be doing for us? Okay, I, I'll read Age for Hope, which is something we need. Hope sat back when Pandora opened the box to unleash every evil on mankind. Hope alone stayed behind, or so the Greek myth said. In no rush to scatter panic, create pandominium or pandemic like the rest. Hope is still there inside the box waiting to be invited. Thank you. Hope mm -hmm. is still inside the box yep. waiting to be invited. I think that's a great way to end. Um, <laughs> as we wrap, do you have anything you want to add? Not really. This has been, um, I mean, I've enjoyed talking to you. I'm now exhausted from all these questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank it's you so it's very easier much. to write. <laughs> it's easier to write. Um, even though, you know, I think, mm -hmm. as you said before, it's, and it's, it's not something we should overlook. It takes a lot of work and a lot of dedication for anything that you want to perfect. Mm -hmm. Um, and so a message to persons young or old, you know, if you're serious about something, dedicate your time, find the time to dedicate to it. Um, mm -hmm. Another lesson from Miss Senior is you can write, you can, you can write poetry. Um, and all you need to do is take up a pen or a paper or open your mouth and speak. Um, and you'd be surprised um, what ends up on paper mm -hmm. or what ends up on social media. Use social media and other media um, to express yourself um mm -hmm. so many so many valuable lessons coming from our interview today all right so the we want to we want to say so i'm taking off my interview we want to big up the national library of jamaica yes, for seeing this 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 um poet laureate of jamaica program through for keeping it alive for energizing it for breathing new life into it over and over again Thank you so very much, Big Up Yourself, Ms. Lashley. Sorry. All right. So, <laughs> um, your final words um, as we mm -hmm. close and talk a little bit about the National Library and mm -hmm. how persons might be able to take advantage of the services of the National Library as we close. Yeah. Well, I, I shouldn't be the one speaking for the National Library, but I, I grew up, I mean, you know, using the services of the National Library. It's an amazing resource. And um, there, there are all kinds of um, services that are available. They have a website. So I would encourage anyone to take advantage of that. But I really think the whole idea of the National um, Poet Laureate is an amazing I'm, I'm really glad that jamaica has a poet laureate not just because it's me but i think it's something that countries cities around the world have as a way of encouraging um poetry mm -hmm. um a consciousness of poetry as belonging to all of us not as something that belongs to just a few people and certainly that's that's the idea i like to get around across to people and I'm sure it's something that the National Library would like to encourage. The whole idea of reading, mm -hmm. of writing, of appreciating literature, you know, that is what libraries are about and yeah. that the National Library is a storehouse of our knowledge as Jamaicans. So I'd, I'd invite everyone to just check it out, you know. You hear that? Check it out. Yep. National Library is still remaining uh, relevant, um, mm. even in the pandemic, uh, when you're not able to go out. Remember, it's nlj.gov.jm. Remember National Library of Jamaica on social media. Um, they're, they're at natlib. J A. Um, so that's their handle at Natlib J A. Remember NLJ dot G O V dot J M. And if you don't remember that, always come over to J I S dot G O V dot J M. Uh, put a comment even after the interview. Put a comment, um, and we will get. We will we'll answer your questions. We will get that information to you because we are the Jamaica Information Service. <laughs> All right. Um, listen out because. We're going to be broadcasting Miss Senior's interview on the Arts page tomorrow, all day. So check that out. And next week, Wednesday, we sit with Miss Senior again 
on Studio 58A or radio broadcast. So listen out for that. Miss Senior, it has been the honor of my life. <laughs> Vanessa. Thank you so really? very much. It really has. Thank you so very much. Uh, well, thank this you. It's really being, yeah. the best part of my job. I get to interview yeah. the people who I grew up on. Mm. Um, so thank you for coming. Thank you. I thank enjoyed you. it. Yes. <laughs> thank you so fun. very much uh, for sharing with us and sharing with the world mm -hmm. um, your work, your career, your life, your plans, um, and all the best thank in this you. new season. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. This has been Studio 58A live here on Facebook. I've been your host, Vanessa Silvera. Have a great week. Walk good. Remember, mask up before you talk up. Have a good one. <laughs> <laughs>